Hello and a warm welcome back to my channel. Today I hope to answer the question, can artificial intelligence be used to cheat, plagiarize my internal assessments? A lot of cheap knowledge out there I think could be deeper than we need to worry about. There's a lot of hyperbolic um, headlines about there about artificial intelligence. The whole education world is, is worried. They're thinking that kids can just go on to here, students can just go on to here, and they can come out with a dynamite, high-scoring assessment with very little effort from themselves. So I hope to answer, teachers, do we need to be worried? And students, can you actually use this for your benefit? Hmm. What is it? It's artificial intelligence. Yes, okay, we've all heard about that. What does it mean? It's a mistake to be relying on it for anything important right now, and that's the CEO of uh, the OpenAI, which is the source uh, software for this application. It's a preview, preview of progress. It's nothing more. A principal put, do not use chat GPT or any other automated writing tool for school papers. It's cheating and will not be tolerated. If you're caught using this or any other writing tool, there will be serious consequences. So schools are clearly worried uh, about this. So why have they done it? Well, what doesn't Google do? Well, let's have a look. I want to be successful in my IA. I googled effect of temperature on vitamin C really in the restaurants that are available to you for your internal assessment. This is right down at the bottom. This is like McDonald's of, of, of internal assessment, but my personal feelings aside. This was the second or third hit on Google from student documents and it's an old IA that a student has uploaded. If you don't know that these exist yet, really get with the program, wake up, just put it into Google. There, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of internal assessments out there from previous years, which students have uploaded to help other students. So I'm assuming the student knows this. They found uh, this IA, thought, brilliant, I'm going to use ChatGTP to write it. So I'm trying to get in the mind of the student here. I'm asking questions which were in the plagiarized, sorry, borrowed IA. What are the problems with insufficient vitamin C? How can I analyze the amount of vitamin C? How can I titrate the amount of vitamin C? And shared here, you can see what ChatGTP did. I then copied and pasted that into a Google document. And I got two sides of what I'd consider pretty average preamble. There's a definitely an absence of molecular structure. There's definitely an absence of in-depth chemistry, but as a level four-ish, IA preamble seems pretty good. And since it's all harvested from the internet, so there's nothing original about it, it's just the AI which has synthesized it into a new, new, new way, which is what we're doing anyway, would this actually defeat Turnitin checks? Well, one way to find out. So I created the document. I forgot to name it. You're seeing, um, I'm not claiming here to be an expert on uh, the chat GTP or any other artificial intelligence. Um, so you literally I had 10 minutes and I'm, this is not a euphemistic 10 minutes. This is a literal actual 10 minutes playing with it before I made this video. And this will be hopefully a good um, reflection of what a student will be going through if they're trying to use it to be inspired. Okay. AI for IA, like file. Upload it. Shouldn't take long. It's only two pages of written words. There's no uh, diagrams or uh, images to worry about. Confirm, yes, this is very private, uh, only to me and the rest of the YouTube viewers. No one else will see this, I promise. I should then be able to go to the uh, project and I should get, oh, 17% green, ka-ching, ka-ching. I wrote three or four questions and also, as we all know, it's not about the percentage, it's about any massive chunks of text. There are no big chunks of text and in all honesty, as a teacher, if a student submitted this and I saw this, I would not be worried. That would pass my checks. So then I'm an intelligent student. I'm using the rubric which my teacher has shared with me. Huge thanks again to Kathleen Quinn. Phenomenally useful document this. And I'm going through it. I'm looking for research question, experimental context. What's the background? What's the class of compounds? I then run back to my artificial intelligence, trying to remember what I read from this beautiful rubric here. And I go into here and I start asking, do you need to pay for it? No, it's free. Did I have to verify an email? Yes, that's all I had to do. Verify my email once and it was gold. So now going back from that rubric, what class of compounds is vitamin C in? I mean, I know, probably you know. A student maybe doesn't know. 
So what's it going to tell me? It tells me more than Google. Why does it tell me more than Google? Because it's putting it into uh, a synthesized, verbose, um, lucid see, okay, account of what vitamin C's uh, compound classes is. And it's telling me it's in these foods, it's water soluble. I mean, it might help towards gaining a point on personal engagement exploration. I don't think it by itself that is a wonderful thing to be putting in. I then asked the chemical structure, I wanted to see if it could show me the molecule and clearly it cannot show me the molecule. I don't know what that is. It's acidic, got a pKa value, 4.2. Okay, I could have looked that up in the IB chemistry data booklet or using Google. Again, what more than Google does this, this give me? And then what's the chemical structure? I've, and I had, that was on a regenerate the question or regenerate the response, I think it is, just to give it another chance. And clearly it's not particularly done a great job of, of doing that at this moment in time. This may be me, this may be my complete ineptitude in using the artificial intelligence, but let's carry on. We are tenacious. Check of the, of the rubric, check of the original internal assessment, and then go back into here. And I'm gonna try and plow on and see what I get from the next question. So I want to know which method. This could be looking at uh, oxygen content, the pool water, effective UV light. Uh, it could be looking at Arrhenius equation. It could be looking at iod iodination of propanone. All the classics. I've played with them. I've stuck with vitamin C for ease of making this video. Which titration? Okay, and then it says some of the analytes and titration. It's just general. Then at last, we get something specific. Common titration method is iodine. Yes, it is. And I think that's the one that's on the University of Canterbury uh, outreach program stuff. Um, it tells me what an endpoint is. It tells me about using starch as indicator. And it tells me to calculate the concentration of vitamin C. It doesn't tell me how to calculate the concentration of vitamin C. And then it talks about 2C, 2,6-DC PIP and 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, uh, which is not something I recommend any students or schools to, to be using. I then wondered, let's give it a simple calculation. I've used some sodium hydroxide, given the concentration. I've titrated that against the ascorbic acid. Is it able, if I can spell ascorbic, yes, uh, and that's to, is it actually able to perform this, this calculation? And the result was, was a little bit surprising. Let's have a look. So it began, it began to have a go, and I gave it again, regenerate the response. No, nothing, did not like it. So you're still gonna have to do your, your calculations. No surprises there, okay. So personal engagement, yes, pretty useful. Exploration, decreasing useful ability, there is such a word. But as soon as you get into specific data, your own data, um, then it's going to, to, to struggle. In fact, it's going to be no use to you whatsoever. Um, in here, for analysis, we need raw data tables. We know the uh, legends need to have the uncertainties, um, consistent decimal places, all of these things. Okay. And then I thought, well, you know, okay, I've got my data. I've done my experiment. You've done your experiments. Glad you did the experiment, not just made the data up. Very good. So can I plot a graph? And sure enough, I can. But I do need to use Python. I do need to download myplot.lib. And then I just put my data in. And this is actually more convoluted, more difficult than using Google Sheets to create my data tables and my graph. In fact, Google Sheets and Excel are much easier than this method. So I don't see the, the advantage. And again, it may be me. I don't know how to use it. it Maybe me. I don't see the advantage of doing it in, in this method. And certainly I'd have to learn how to do that on top of my Google Sheets Excel knowledge, which I'm not prepared to do because I'm an efficient person. We get to evaluation. We need to be using the uh, ranges. We need to be using the magnitude of the systematic and the random errors. But again, without the specific data, how can this AI actually synthesize a lucid and uh, verbose response for a high scoring chemistry internal assessment. It seems to me after my short time exposed to it, it's, it is very general, okay? It's not specific. 
So I can ask it about the magnitude of systematic and random errors and it will give me good answers, but it won't give me my experimental uh, quantification from the results that I got. And that's what you need for the high scoring internal assessment. Nothing wrong with the information, but there's nothing specific in there that's helping me as a student to get high scoring marks. So, you know, general questions that we have, line of best fit, does it go through the error bars? Have I quantified for more random errors? How do I know there are more systematic errors? And that's gonna be specific for each experiment. And until you can actually upload your data to this and have it look at your data, I believe that's still a skill that we need to thankfully teach students to be able to do for success in their internal assessments. So overarching, good, general, great, specifics, not yet, not yet. I don't see how this is on top of what we, we currently already have. So yeah, back to the rubric. And we're looking at the evaluation here, looking for substitutes, methods or substitutes, uh, pieces of apparatus. What's a good alternative to a burette? Well, we all know it's measuring cylinders and micro pipettes, but a student might not, a student might not. So I think this is, uh, rather than being the, the hyperbolic, um, oh, scared, run to the hills, oh my gosh, they're all going to cheat. I don't think we're in that, that position at all. I think for a student who perhaps has uh, chosen chemistry because there's nothing else available, and I know this does happen, this could actually be quite a good tool to help them when they get stuck or to provide suggestions for them where they're not sure what the alternative w could be. You know? We still have lots of students that want to do chemistry till 18 and then that's it. <laughs> they are done and they deserve uh, as high a score as possible as much as the kids that want to, to, to carry on. So... How can I write a high scoring chemistry internal assessment? My answer is you follow the rubric. Okay, you follow the rubric, you follow the, the advice in my previous videos, um, you follow what you're interested in and you deliver a 12 page, still for 23 and 24 report and it will be new in May 25. So let's just uh, hold on to our hats on that one and not get carried away, okay? Um, we're still two years away from the first assessment of the new syllabus. This is pretty useless. This is very useful. This is what I would be sharing with my students. And if they get stuck, I'll be directing them to Mr. M for Chem's videos, but I'll also be directing them perhaps to ChatGBT to give them a little bit of uh, inspiration to help them on their way. What's the solution to all this potential for, for plagiarism? I said at the beginning, there's dozens if not hundreds of internal assessments available on the internet for free. Well, an example, a prescribed practical. Um, we supervise for any students that have done their first draft and we see there's evidence of plagiarism. They're then under 100% supervision and we do it on Google Docs, we've got the version history. Um, where they are monitored, they are seen, there's no communications from tutors. Tutor, if, the problem is not chat GPT, the problem is tutors being paid to write the internal assessment. Let's be honest here. Okay, this is not going to give you any um, that I can see potential benefit over what there is currently available to students that have a few dollars in their back pocket to, to massage the system. So this will improve. It said at the beginning that this is the beginnings. This will progress. It will get better. It will get faster. It will get more able. It's not particularly designed for students doing chemistry internal assessment, right? So that's not what the intention was. It's to show that artificial intelligence can curate, create, uh, procure a lucid account of any problem that, that we put it to. I do like the regenerate, the response question. It seems to be more in depth when you press regenerate. Maybe that's just on the chemistry. And, you know, how can this be actually used? Well, sparingly and i'm not that worried now thank you very much for watching smash that subscribe button thank you very much indeed